the microphone. Now you can hear me. Great. Um, message queue telemetry transport. So it's a um, very lightweight uh, pub sub protocol uh, originally developed by IBM and another company. And um, yeah, it's, it's designed for, for very lightweight opera uh, operations. So for instance, the original use case was oil pipelines through Siberia, you know, where you want to measure the flow uh, to make sure there's no leaks in the system, and you have a satellite connection, solar powers, uh, solar powered um, connections and stuff like that. So low power, small messages, you know, and for instance, the original use case is set the, the, the oil pipelines um, if they, re they realized if they could save a byte per message, it would save them a million dollars a year on their uh, um, satellite bill. Um, has various qualities of service um, for, for the pubs up. So fire and forget, quality service zero. Uh, one is at least once. Uh, and two is once and only once. Uh, so it's reliable. Um, and here's a simple picture, so, so how you can use it. So you've got your broker, which is you have to be somewhere on the, on the internet. Uh, you have your publisher and your subscriber, and you send over messages on a topic, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and the nice thing about this is, you know, if you have multiple subscribers, your publisher doesn't need to know about that. You, know, you decouple that. Uh, and the same thing if you have multiple publishers. Again, your subscribers don't need to know about that, uh, which is a nice thing, I think. You know, sometimes you use REST for everything, but the, one of the problems of REST is you still couple the connection between the instigator, you know, the client, and the server. If you use something like a message, messaging t uh, technology, you decouple that even more. Um, very helpful. Um, so MQTT, uh, very simple, as I said. It's just like 15 commands or something like that. So publish, so you include a topic. So for instance, the topic is closure, MQTT, my topic. That's just a string. Um, the payload is just an array of bytes. You know? MQTT doesn't specify what the payload is. You decide what your payload is. And that could be a string, that could be an Eden structure, just to be about anything. Um, obviously, the publisher and the subscriber still need to agree on what it is and what it all means. Um, you set the quality of service, zero, one, or two. Um, the retain flag, retain flag is very handy, comes in, um, for instance, when messages don't update that frequently, you want the last published message. For instance, temperature, you know, I'm publishing the temperature of this room, the temperature is fairly constant at 10 o'clock, it changed for the last time. A, a subscriber comes on to that an hour later, it just wants the latest value, you know, and that's retained by the, by the broker, and that's then published um, to the subscriber. Um, subscribing, the other very same thing. So again, you, uh, so, so you subscribe to topics. You have wild cards. So you have the hash send here on the end. That means, for instance, I get every message for closure MQT, my topic, and closure MQTT, your topic. You know, so I'll get everything, which whatever at the end there. Um, you can have wildcards uh, here at the front, the start. So Ruby, MQTT, my topic, and Java, MQTT, my topic. That's the one that I would get in that case, for instance. And again, you specify the quality of service. Um, and that's, that's basically the, the, the whole protocol in a nutshell. So MQTT is an open standard. It's been verified by the OASIS uh, standard group, and it's an ISO standard. Um, there's lots of open source projects around it. So the Eclipse uh, PAHO project, is, is one which is uh, quite active on that. They have a, a, a Mosquito, uh, a server implemented in the C, runs on lots of different platforms, from your Raspberry Pi to your big, big machine, uh, multiple clients, Java, C, C++, Android, you name it, you can run it. Um, Android, of, um, Arduino, for instance, as well. Um, closure script and closure, obviously, that's why we're here for. So there's the machine head library from the CloseWorks people. It wraps the Eclipse Paho Java client, as I said, CloseWorks, closuremqtt.info, that's where you can find it. Um, and works pretty well, no problems. And there's a CLGS JS Paho client, so that makes the Eclipse Paho JavaScript client accessible from, accessible from ClojureScript. Um, and now, Let's see if this actually works, because I just realized I had 
maybe a firewall on. So if you guys could go to this URL now, we could actually start using um, MQTT. So, and by the way, the code is on, up on GitHub. Um, so everyone, some people are there yet or not? Can, can you actually see it? Because that's, that's my big question. I don't know if it actually will work. This is the, 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 the problem. But I guess you have to be the wireless, right? Huh? In the wireless, right? Yeah. And you have to be on the local wireless for this, yeah? No, you're not getting it? The guest wireless, yes. I'm on the guest wireless. No? Okay. Uh, startups, startup rock exclamation mark. The Wi Fi is isolated, okay. Oh, you can't even ping it. Well, wow, that's crap. Okay. Well, okay, I can run this locally for some bizarre reason. So, yeah, so I, my name on here, so this is. Oh, and I send a message, and there it is. Oh, I press enter twice, and in my other window, there it is as well. Oh, so closure. And another test message, and again, there you go. So, so this is, for instance, using um, the JavaScript, uh, the closure script and the JavaScript library under the covers to sending over messages. Uh, so this is just a proof of concept, obviously, uh, but you could use it for all kinds of things, um, as, as, as uh, environmental things and IoT and machine-to-machine -machine stuff. Uh, it's very, very good, useful. And that's all I had to show you. And I'm sorry about that the wireless doesn't quite work. <laughs> yeah. Oi, oh, it works, hey! <laughs> There, there we go. Thank you, Daniel, wherever you are. Thank you. You're a star. Yeah, all right. Okay, he broke into my machine. Yeah, well done. Uh, I'll leave it up and running. If everyone else wants to get in and have a chat, um, feel free. Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, any, any questions, I guess, very quickly? Yes. Message Typical message length. Um, well, in this case, it's just your string, obviously. Um, but it, it, the, the, the protocol itself goes up to 250 megabytes, I think. Um, but most broker implementations limit that, I think. Uh, because obviously, you could do a denial of service on a public, um, because there are quite a few public brokers out there. Um, yeah, you don't want to have a retained message on every topic you can think of which is 250 megabytes. That would be a denial of service attack. Uh, so there are usually configurations where you can limit that. Uh, but usually they're fairly small. Um, less than a kilobyte, I would say. Yeah. Any other Anyone questions? else? Questions? Yeah? Yeah, OK, hang on. There. For some reason, it's all in capitals. You don't need to do it all in capitals. <laughs> but the keynote thing decided it was a good thing to do it all in capitals. Anyway, you have a question. Yeah, you talked about the retained messages. And yes. does it store the last message in the chat or all the messages? So, so my chat application doesn't use retained messages. You know, If someone else logs on now, they wouldn't see uh -huh. what has gone on before that. But there are use cases where you, for instance, want the last value which was published. There are also some use cases where that last value is not irrelevant. Um, for instance, maybe you have a stock ticker. You care about the next value, you know, and it might come very soon. Um, but for instance, the, the temperature of the room doesn't change that often, um, hopefully. Um, so the fact that I get the last temperature from an hour ago, that's fine in that use case. So it depends on your use case whether you want to use retain or not. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Anyone else? Because I've got four seconds left, I see here. Oh, yeah. Um, the retain mechanism reminds a lot of the Kafka cleaning stuff, right? So in Kafka, you retain all the messages. But yeah. when, you, when you clean them, you just retain the last one, right? Uh, so yeah, so any so comparison <coughs> between Kafka? Um, 
So, so Kafka is a log, is my understanding. You know? So it, it's much more transactional, and it saves thing on on the disk, doesn't it? So yeah, if 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 you can use it that way, but you yeah. don't actually don't have to. No, but 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 MQTT is, is yeah, it, it's passing on messages quickly, you know, um, and there's no no history either. You know, I can't go to the previous message, for instance. You know, when yeah, I when I log when I subscribe to a topic, no, I just get yeah. whatever is retained and newer. Yeah, nothing in, else. In Kafka, you could set the, the topic size to basically zero, and it would always clean everything as yeah. it goes. Right? Yeah, so that, that, that's basically so what you do. Well, maybe one. But, uh, yeah, zero or one in that case is, is, yeah, is what exactly. MQTT supports. Yeah. Right. Okay, that's it. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Cheers.